what's going on here. My lab normally does not get 72 fails in 24 hours. It's just me and this lab. There is no application that should be failing this many times. How did this happen? This is what you will be doing at work. You show up one day. Obviously, someone is trying to brute force something. Hello and welcome back to IT Security Labs. Today, I'm going to show you how to identify threats or malicious activity on your network using the Elasticsearch SIM tool. This is a new tool that came out in 2019. And as you can see, I have it in my lab here. I'm going to show you how you can use this free tool to actually identify the threats on your network and use it to actually benefit you. The first part that I'm going to do is I'll just show you an overview of what you can get from this tool. And if you like it, you can continue to watch and I'll show you how the whole lab is set up at a high level. And if enough people like it, I'll make a whole video series about how to set it up from scratch. It will not take a long time. Just let me know in the comments if you want the full series. But without wasting time, let me show you what you can get from the Elk Sim. And once you get the data, we'll actually try to identify who is doing this, who has been trying to log into a system 72 times over the past 24 hours. And also which system was this? Was it a single system? Was it multiple systems? We'll be able to find out uh, after that. But uh, the first thing that we need to understand is that the Elk Sim is a free open source solution that you can install in your own lab at home or in your small business environment uh, and run it for free if you want. Or you can uh, use the cloud, they have a cloud. So the folks at Elasticsearch are very kind about this. And this is what they say about their product. They say that you can protect your organization with this SIM. And as you can see, they pretty much say you can import data from any system. And actually, they mean it. I have data coming from my Cisco Meraki MX device into my SIM here. And that data is showing up as NetFlow data. This is just my uh, NetFlow data coming in from Cisco Meraki device. So th that's what they say here. You can uh, analyze audit events, login information, and authentication data, DNS traffic. I actually have DNS traffic also coming into my um, SIM over here. All right, so as you can see, I'm actually analyzing DNS traffic here. I can see the DNS queries. I can even see the IP addresses here. And if I scroll all the way down, I can see the top domains, top DNS domains. So this is really, really good. And I even have this graph somewhere in there. And my Cisco Meraki is getting this net flow, which is also generating this diagram here. So this is just in a nutshell, the some of the things that you can see using the Elk SIM. And I'm just showing you what I have, but there's even more. You can use this for incident res response and there's way more things that I'm not even covering today. Just wanted to give you an overview. So how do we use this thing? Now that we have all this data flowing in, we know that we have host in here and we can see all this data and we have three hosts. How do we actually uh, make use of this thing? How is this thing important to us? And the first thing that I want us to understand is my lab is running in VMware, vSphere. And this is my vCenter here. I have the Elk SIM running in, in an Ubuntu server. 64. I have a domain controller, which is a Windows Server 2012. It's just a domain controller for the, for the lab. Nothing too special here. Uh, then I'm running a Plex server here. It's also part of the test. So I, um, I'm, this is a sandbox Plex server where if I install something in my, before I put something in my actual Plex server, I test it in here. Then I come back here to analyze the traffic, see if there's any Trojans being in, brought into my house or not. So that's what I'm running right now. And I, I have other things in this, uh, environment that I'll, I don't talk about today. I highly encourage that you read about it 
and if you this is something that you're interested in you end up setting it up which i can show you just like this video and comment below that you want me to set to show you how to set it up and um, i'll create a couple videos it's very simple to set up and i'll show you how to do it i might even write a blog post about it but it's simple so now that we have all that information let's actually try to find out what's going on here my lab normally does not get 72 fails in 24 hours it's just me and this lab there is no application that should be failing this many times how did this happen this is what you will be doing at work you show up one day obviously someone is trying to brute force something or there's one system that's that's configured in a way that it doesn't stop attempted logins most systems that are properly configured will not allow 72 logins con consecutively it will stop responding after five or six or three so something is seriously wrong here because we have 72 failed logins and in fact let's just make that number even higher and to do that i'll introduce you to my friend kali this is the newest kali linux i made a video about it showing you how uh, to set it up but uh, this one allows us to do the kali undercover we're going to brute force a machine on my lab in my lab and in this case i'm trying to brute force a machine 192.168.5.51 which is my sim machine i'm using hydra running this command here i'm just using some random word list the metasploit one and i'm trying to brute force ssh on that machine look what happens if i run hydra here then come back to my sim see i have 72 right if i refresh now i now have 144 and hydra is running in the background refresh it one more time now i have 150 and refresh it one more time so that's how i'm uh, generating these failed attempts i'm just brute forcing a machine and as you can see it will keep going up and up and up this is a misconfigured machine i shouldn't allow brute forcing to even happen and there are ways to mitigate against that so now you know that you know how i'm generating the traffic but uh assuming that you didn't know what's going on how do you use this information to your advantage first you would know that you shouldn't have these failed attempts as a network administrator or system administrator you look at this your bells should be like wow what the hell is happening in my network i shouldn't be having 210 failed attempts so you go to authentications here as you can see you can see the success and failures um on my domain controller i have this many successes that's fine but the failures are all happening on one machine and we're trying to use the use uh user root and we can tell here last failure was in one minute ago when i was running my hydra from kali now from this data we know that the target machine is the same and the machine that is causing this is 192.168.5.58 and depending on the configuration of your network you could even resolve this to your domain name or uh, you should be able to track down this machine and look what happens i can just click there on that machine and it will bring me to this page and from this page uh, if this was a public uh, ip address i should be able to click on virus total here and first total pull all the information that is known about this uh, IP address. But obviously, this one is a pub. This one is a private IP address, so we don't get any of that uh, good information. You even have some host ID or some host names here if you had any, and then uh, it will tell you the domains. But if I go back to the host here and search for that attacking ip address that i found out about just want to find out more okay this is what what's associated with this machine there's two hosts involved sim and the domain controller all right i can look again on the authentications to verify the information that i already know events this is the most important uh one 
that I've found to be useful. If you go to the events tab here, it will tell you exactly what happened. As you can see, the session, it was root. When the sim attempted a login via there, it was an SSH login and the result was fail. And that is the source. This is, this is really, really important. Then as you scroll down, you see all these failed att attempts. Now you're confirming what you already know that is indeed this machine that is causing uh, these failed attempts. Then from here, you can go to uh, and try to find out which host this is. If you have switches that are configured properly, you can try to find out if this person is actually, uh, this machine is, um, you, you can try to find out if this machine got its IP address from DHCP. Then you can go to your DHCP server, find out what the MAC address for this machine is. If you find the MAC address for this machine, you can even track it down to a specific port in your network. If you don't know the host name, then you can find out who plugged into that port. Maybe it's a, a user who came with a laptop that's infected that they just plugged into your net network. Maybe it's a Wi-Fi, someone who is just uh, malicious who is connected to Wi-Fi. You'll be able to track them back. So that's how you use this tool just for identifying threats. This is one of thousands of other ways you can use it. But I uh, just wanted to give you just a little overview of that. But of course, there is even more interesting data here. Uh, I'm using Audit Bit. These ones are just little agents that you install on your systems. For some of this data for NetFlow, I'm getting my data from uh, Cisco Meraki. So if you go to your Cisco Meraki device, you'll see that there is this NetFlow IP collector and NetFlow, NetFlow port. As you can see, you just go to network wide general. Then uh, over here, I'm using port 6500. I'm sending all the NetFlow data here. And when the data comes from here, I'm able to see all the flows as they come here. All right, so this is my Cisco Meraki NetFlow. It's literally coming from this right here all the way to my Kibana. And this is the last three hours. Looking at this data, I know exactly what was happening in my network. In my network, I got home at this time. I did a bunch of things here, then I stopped, and now it's back to normal. This is normal behavior that I know, and it helps. Most of my traffic is concentrated in the United States because that's where I'm located at the moment. So that's why it's there, and this can be valuable if you want to understand what's going on in your network. So. If you want me to show you how to set everything up, just uh, remember to like this video and comment below and just let me know. It took me about three hours to set everything up. I'll show you how to install it for testing purposes in your home lab. It's very important to understand what's going on in your network and this is one way to do it for free. And you can test it at your own ha home and learn the skills that are needed. If you like this content, remember to like and subscribe. I'll be making more videos. I love playing with data and if that's what something that you're interested in, uh, remember to subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.